something that I enjoy doing is hiking and while I'm hiking I like to look for things like feathers uh, to collect so I have a ton of feathers in my room actually. Uh, I was baptized as a baby but I haven't I didn't truly start living out uh, my faith until I was a junior in high school. Uh, a friend, uh, I had expressed interest in going to a church and a friend had recommended that I try uh, a Mennonite church and so I just happened to Google Mennonite churches in the area and um, I thought Pigeon River had the best name. Uh, one of my favorite scriptures is from 2 Timothy 2.22, which is, Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace alongside of those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Uh, it means something to me because actually for a month or so, I've been um, kind of putting off going to church for the first time. And I kept seeing the number 222 everywhere. Uh, I'd see it on license plates. As I'm driving to work, I'd see it on the bank sign. Um, I'd scan something at work and uh, 222 would be at the end of the barcode or something. And so finally, uh, one night, uh, it was a Saturday night, uh, I was thinking about going to church, uh, but again, trying to put it off and I saw that number again. So I just Googled uh, Bible verses 222 and that's the one that came up. One meaningful God moment that comes to mind um, was actually like maybe five, six, maybe seven years ago. I was working a 12 hour shift at uh, the factory I was at. So it was about 1.30 in the morning and God put it on my heart to pray for uh, a certain woman who I had worked with. Um, she worked, you know, only an eight hour shift. She, so she would have been at home at this time, but God put it on my heart to pray for her. And I was on a press that you could walk away from. So I went into the maintenance bathroom and just poured out my heart to God, uh, just everything about her, everything that came to mind. And about a half hour later, I got a huge message on Facebook from her. Um, just her basically pouring out things that happened in her childhood with her dad and things like that. So for some reason, uh, the Holy Spirit really wanted me to pray for her at that moment and um, it got through to her. Yeah, people probably didn't know that I couldn't drive all my life until I took training in school. And then um, um, my nephew, Lowell Sorsgerber, was my same age. And so after I was married, we, I got to, had to go to work, you know, after I was out of nursing. So uh, he helped me, but probably most people don't realize that. We had revival meetings at our church that was at Michigan Avenue Church. We, my folks were there, and uh, we had, um, I was 10 years old, and I really enjoyed, I can't remember the preacher anymore, that was too long ago. I was I'm 87 years old now, so, so it's a long time ago, and I had two friends that accepted Christ at the same time when I was there. So that was wonderful. I loved him ever since. What brought me to Pigeon River? Well, I had, I had uh, five siblings in my family and three, three married moths. So, and I had my grandparents live. I, went to this church, went to Mid Pigeon River, and uh, my mom and dad were, married, uh, were buried here after so many 
and my husband's father, our family, was a preacher here. So that's where we went. John 3.16 is a, my prop. But I like Romans. Uh, that's got such good things for us to grow in our life. And that's, that's a lot of things that got marked in my Bible. And I really appreciate that. But it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, when our second boy was born, Kevin, he was breathing. We popped him in the uh, uh, incubator. Incubator right away. And then the priest, uh, the doctor came out and said, shall we call the priest to baptize him? And I said, no, that's not necessary because God will be with him. He'll either heal him or he'll take him up to him. Es, uh, es, algo interesante que acerca de ti que otras personas no sepan. Bueno, este, mi nombre es Omar. Eh, tengo tres hermanos: eh, Iván, Jonathan y Betsy. Tengo mi familia: Gabriela, mi esposa, mi hija Dana y mi hijo Elías. Este, algo que que me gusta compartir, que siempre he visto como un punto interesante de mi vida es la realización de mis estudios. ¿Por qué? Porque esto pasó eh, ya estando viviendo con mi esposa Gabriela. Entonces, para mí fue algo eh, complicado, eh, lo veía difícil, pero al final satisfactorio porque logré terminar mi, mi carrera. Este, pero lo más importante y lo más este, eh, lindo de esto es los 22 años que llevo ya con mi esposa. Yo con ella me empecé a vivir, a tomar esa responsabilidad a una edad muy temprana. A los 16 años tenía ella, 15 y yo 17 años. Entonces al principio pues todos lo veían como una locura, como algo que estaba destinado a, al fracaso. Después de cuatro años, eh, eso fue allá por el 2002, después de cuatro años inicié la universidad en el 2006. Y fíjate, después lo que fue mi etapa en la primaria y mi etapa en el, la preparatoria, pues siempre mis notas fueron regulares de un estudiante común. Ya en la universidad alcancé notas que ni yo mismo este, logré imaginar, si me entiendes. Al grado de, de alcanzar becas por mérito académico y titularme por mención honorífica. Entonces para mí es algo que, que me llena de mucha satisfacción. Voy a tratar de recordar todo. Mi nombre es Omar. Tiene uh, tres hermanos. His wife is married. He has two kids. Um, something that is very interested on him. He said that um, his journey through life um, with his wife, his family, most of it. Um, he was uh, 17. His wife was 16 when they first got together, and a lot of people thought that was going to be uh, a failure because it was just too early. Also, uh, he went to school, <clears throat> and at first at school he was just a normal kid, a regular kid, not very good uh, on the school, but uh, in college he, he got notes that he couldn't even believe, and he thinks that all of that is thanks to um, support with his family, his wife, more than anything, and uh, so yeah, he got a uh, degree in Mexico and he's very proud of that. 
Summarizing. Okay. La siguiente pregunta es que hace cuánto tiempo tú eres uh, cristiano. Ok. Bueno, en sí, fíjate, desde los 14 años yo he asistido a, a la iglesia. En un principio de, de, de mi juventud, eh, yo visitaba mucho lo que era iglesias católicas, de la religión católica. Después, ya hablando de, para ser específico, desde hace cinco años, eh, fue cuando nació en mí más el tema del cristianismo, si ¿sí me entienden. Y es cuando busqué eh, una iglesia que donde yo me sintiera eh, en confianza y donde yo tenía que encontrar esa conexión con, con Jesucristo, con Dios. Entonces fue cuando inicié, ya se podría decir hace cinco años ya siendo cristiano, porque es cuando ya he tenido eh, conciencia de la presencia de Dios en mi vida. Entonces, son cinco años en los cuales este, asisto a templos cristianos, eh, escucho alabanzas y hace poco, hace como un año fue cuando inicié con la lectura de la Biblia. Entonces cinco años, son cinco años que, que, que puedo decir que soy cristiano. I started going to church since I was uh, 14, uh, my whole life. At the beginning, I was uh, in Mexico, I was in the Catholic Church, but it's been five years since I went to uh, the Christian Church, and because I feel like that's where I, I belong, and I feel comfortable with the family, and so yeah, it's been five years since. La siguiente pregunta es, ¿qué es lo que te trajo a la iglesia de Christian River? Okay, bueno, fíjate que... Pues desde que llegué aquí un año estuve solo, no estaba mi familia, entonces no había visitado iglesias y la primera vez que visité una iglesia fue cuando me invitaron ustedes, fui con ustedes a, a Keystone, eh, sin embargo, pues no, no, no quiero decir que, que sea una, una mala iglesia, un mal templo, pero la diferencia que encontré aquí en Pillon es eh, esa, esa armonía que existe y la forma en la que ellos reciben a sus visitantes, en este caso a sus, este, a sus cristianos. Si te das cuenta, tú las personas son más, se, tratan de allegarse más a uno en preguntarte cómo estás, eh, si, si, cómo te va, cómo está tu familia, y la preocupación, lo que ellos procuran, porque tú entiendas el mensaje de Biblia, ¿no? En este caso, sus diapositivas en español, eh, las dinámicas que hacen este, este tema, en este caso la entrevista. Entonces es eso, el ambiente que se vive en esta iglesia, que para mí es algo que yo, yo buscaba aquí en Michigan y pues, fue la indicada. So, I've been to two different churches here in Michigan, uh, but I felt like here at Michigan, River, it's, uh, I feel so welcoming with the people here. They always care for you. They like, uh, they always ask uh, your name. They, I just feel very welcome and, and I feel like this is the place where, where I'm supposed to be. La siguiente es una escritura que tú, que sea importante para ti, que es lo que significa. Ok, bueno, mira, la que, una de las que siempre me, siempre traigo presente en la mente y es la que, híjole, Leo, leo la Biblia, pero la que más siempre se me ha quedado grabada es este Mateo 28, de la 16 al 20. Este, me gustaría leerla, leerla de manera rápida. Okay. Que es la, la gran comisión. ¿Por qué? Porque dice, dice, pero los once discípulos se fueron a Galilea, al monte donde Jesús les había ordenado. Y cuando le dieron, le adoraron, pero algunos dudaban. Y Jesús se acercó y les habló diciendo... Toda potestad es dada en el cielo y en la tierra. Por tanto, id y hacer discípulos a todas las naciones, bautizándolos en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo, enseñándoles que guarden todas las cosas que os he mandado. Y aquí yo estoy con vosotros todos los días hasta el fin del mundo. Es eso la última frase donde dice... 
que nosotros no debemos por qué tener miedo ni, ni vivir preocupados. Mucho menos sentirnos en un momento solos, sino por el contrario, siempre sentir la cercanía que Él tiene con nosotros, la presencia de Él. Por eso Él dice, yo estoy con ustedes todos los días hasta el fin del mundo. Entonces eso es algo que para mí, algo que a mí me gusta es, me gusta observar, era la, la duda que tenían después de haber sido lastimado, lacerado, escupido, crucificado. Después de todo eso, créeme, cómo, cómo dudaban de él. O sea, aún así seguían incrédulos después de toda esa penitencia. Entonces luego se aparece, le resucita y se aparece a ellos y les dice por qué son incrédulos, ¿no? Y te digo, es, es esa. Eh, me gusta porque pues sé que nunca, nunca estoy solo, siempre Dios está, está a mi lado en todo, pues en todas mis metas, todos mis objetivos, ahora son inspirados en Él, y van de la mano de Él, siempre me van a acompañar. So I read the Bible a lot, but uh, my favorite one is Mateo 28, Mateo 28, del 16 al 20, 16 to 20, and what I get from that is uh, that you don't have to build Uh, feel alone uh, or or bad. There's always a there's always a light at the end of the tunnel, and God is always there with you. His presence is there with you. Uh, even though you can have the worst day, uh, He's always there with you, and and He will be till the end. You know, that's what he, okay. he read the whole. significativo. Yo sé en tu vida. Okay. Mira, esta tuvo lugar allá por el 2012, ¿sale? Fíjate que yo trabajaba en las plataformas de petróleo y este, ganaba muy bien. Pero fíjate que todo ese dinero que yo gané se fue en mi hija Dana, porque ella, ella desde los dos añitos, este... Durante un periodo de dos años también se, se enfermó mucho, cano. entonces era médico cada ocho días, cada quince días y todo el dinero era cajas de medicamento. Yeah, so I think uh, this happens in 2012. Uh, I used to work in the oil field, which I was making very decent money. Uh, unfortunately, uh, my daughter she has some health issues at that time also. And uh, I make good money, but everything was going on medical bills, uh, uh, medicines, treatments. Mira, y después de, de tantas visitas a especialistas, a pediatras, yo me tuve un momento en el que mi hija ocho días ya no ingería este alimento. Tampoco la leche materna le, le caía al estómago, ni, ni la de fórmula. Fíjame que estaba yo tan desesperado este, que llegó un momento en el que yo veía a mi esposa ya resignada. Pero fíjate que algo, algo muy, muy, este, muy chistoso, yo lo veo así. Nos topamos a, a unos compadres, padrinos de Dana, y, y nos mandan con un, con un señor, con un señor ya de la, tercera edad se puede decir y este después de tanto medicamento solo bastó un, una partecita de raíz de no sé de qué árbol ni de dónde lo sacó se lo dio de beber y creemos que después de ocho días de que mi hija no comía en ese momento empezó a comer si ¿Sí me entiendes entonces ahí vi un acto de fe tan grande que hasta ahorita lo tengo bien bien marcado porque pues eso no lo hizo ni el Señor ni, ni la raíz sino la fe en Dios que o sea, ahí vi la fe de Dios transformada en la realidad sin ¿sí entiendes cortito no tan cortito um, yeah after everything all treatments specialists and all that stuff like uh, I start losing pain I mean eventually saw my wife, she was losing faith on our daughter to get better. Uh, nothing was working. We got to a point where uh, she wasn't eating at all for eight days. Uh, so we just thought the worst was going to happen. She was a baby. Uh, 
uh, but some friends and family they refer us to someone that was uh, godly in church and this person uh, he came talked to us and helped us a little bit and, and eventually he uh, he grabbed like a herb or something from some type of tree I can't remember what was it um, but I just put faith on that that he was gonna actually uh, help my daughter and he gave the, he made the herb into a tea and that might not be the cause but uh, I put my faith on that and I prayed to God and, and the next day my daughter was actually getting a lot better she was eating and remember that time like it was it was yesterday and I always think about that and thank God for it. Love it. When I go to college I plan to uh, major in psychology and then after that I plan to get a master's degree in occupational therapy and um, do pediatric occupational therapy. I've been a Christian my whole life. Um, I grew up in a Christian household, so I've known God pretty much my whole life. Um, and I accepted Jesus into my heart for the first time in like third grade. Um, so we moved here when I was in the fourth grade when my dad got a job at the church as the pastor. Um, my favorite scripture is James 1, pretty much the whole chapter, but specifically James 1 verses 2 to 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, of any kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature, mature and complete and not lacking anything. So to me, this just means that like when I'm going through hard times and difficulties, rather than um, like being upset about it or pitying it, pitying myself because of it, to just remember that it's all part of God's plan and that it's better preparing me and equipping me for the future. Perfect. So when I was, I think it was a freshman in high school, I went to worship arts camp. And during that period of my life, I was like really struggling with a lot of like faith-based questions um, with a friend and I was just really struggling on how to handle it. And I just remember um, during one of the nights, um, we had like an altar call and we could just raise our hand if we had um, like struggles and we wanted someone to pray for us. And I raised my hand and one of the adults there came and prayed for me. And I didn't even really tell him what I was struggling with specifically, but I just remember when he prayed to, when he prayed for me, he like answered like all the questions that I was struggling with, and I just really felt like it was God like speaking to me through him. So that was a really powerful moment. Love it. 